this lesson, we are going to discuss natural selection. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to define natural selection and explain how the principles of natural selection contribute to the evolution of species. Natural selection is a process in which individuals that have certain heritable traits survive and reproduce at a higher rate than other individuals because of those traits. Natural selection is Charles Darwin's theory on the main driving mechanism of evolution. He noticed that organisms share many characteristics, and that there are characteristics that enhance the survival of species. From this, he perceived adaptation to the environment and the origin of new species as closely related processes. Thus, we have the theory of natural selection. There are different principles governing natural selection. The first is variation. Individual variations frequently represent genetic variation. The individual distinctions in genes or other DNA segments. Natural selection may act on the variations in the population only if they are heritable and they affect the population's ability to survive and reproduce. Also, only the genetically determined portion of the phenotypic variation can have evolutionary consequences. This means that traits that are drastically altered like an increase in muscle mass is not passed on to the offspring. When mutation, duplication of genes, or other processes produce new alleles and genes, gene variation which evolution depends on comes into play. Let us look at how variation affects evolution. Suppose we have three phenotypes of mice color, albino, coffee-colored, and dark. Albino is expressed because of the homozygous dominant genotype. Coffee-colored is brought by the heterozygous genotype and the dark-colored mouse is brought by the homozygous recessive genotype. If these mice are exposed to a predator, let's say a cat, in the dark surface, the cat may find it easier to prey on the light-colored mouse. But this does not mean that the environment favors the survival of the recessive allele. Natural selection actually acts directly on the phenotype and not the genotype. Another example is when a cheetah would prey on a weak or slow zebra since it would not really know the genotype of its prey. Another important thing to take note of is that the environment naturally selects a phenotype using three modes. Suppose we have five phenotypes of mouse color. If the habitat of the mice is a dark rocky area, dark colored mice can hide from predators. Light colored mice are then selected against. This is called directional selection. This happens when conditions favor individuals at one end of a phenotypic spectrum. Thus, moving the population's frequency curve to the phenotypic character in one direction or another. There are also cases when both extremes of the spectrum are favored. This happens when mice live in a patchy habitat made up of light and dark rocks. This makes mice of an intermediate color to be selected against. This is called disruptive selection. Lastly, suppose a population of mice lives in a rocky area that is intermediate in color. This makes both extreme phenotypes to be selected against. This is what we call stabilizing selection. This mode of selection decreases heterogeneity and helps to preserve the existing condition for a given phenotypic character. Such advantages that are passed on will allow the population to produce more offspring, leading to overproduction. Overproduction happens when living things produce more offspring that actually survive. As a result, Natural selection resulting from factors such as predators, lack of food, or adverse physical conditions may lead to an increase in the proportion of favorable characteristics in the population over time. Only a small fraction of the many eggs that have been hatched, young that have been born, and seeds that have been spread complete development. The remaining ones are unable to withstand physical conditions in the environment like salinity or temperature, or they may be eaten or they may have starved or disappeared. Another important principle of natural selection is descent with modification. This is when living things that survive and reproduce pass their genetic traits to their offspring. With this principle, Darwin was able to explain the unity of life. According to this principle, organisms share many characteristics because of the descent of all organisms from an ancestor. This ancestor is believed to have several adaptations or modifications due to the environment. This allows the ancestral species to be fit to specific ways of life. A good example for this is the variation in the beaks of birds which depend on their diet. 
Their beaks originated from an ancestor. It just happened that it was modified based on their diet. With all of these principles playing, the species may now have an enhanced survival. Variations that increase reproductive success would be more common in the next generation. With traits that are favorable for the reproductive success of the species, these variants would now be more frequent in the next generation. The only thing that the population needs to do is to adapt if ever the environment changes its conditions again. These principles then contribute to the survival of the fittest. Natural selection is frequently described using this phrase. However, this phrase is usually misleading when it is thought as a competition among individuals. When we say fittest, this is actually referring to the relative fitness of individuals or the contribution an individual makes to the gene pool of the next generation relative to the contributions of other individuals. Take note that the weakness or absence of a trait of one individual may be the strength of another. An individual may be physically strong, but it may also not contribute to the reproductive lineage of the population. This makes the individual relatively not fit for the survival of the species. To summarize this lesson, let us review the principles of natural selection. Individuals in a population vary in their heritable characteristics. Also, organisms produce offspring that the environment can support. With these two principles playing in the population and the environment, individuals that are well suited to their environment tend to leave more offspring than other individuals. Also, over time, favorable traits accumulate in the population. And that ends our discussion on natural selection.